couple of wedding issues. One, there's a woman named uh, Nishma Mistri. She is a marketing manager for an online bridal community. Now, what is that? I guess you go on there and plan your wedding. A marketing manager. She has gone viral. Sounds like she does social media posts. Uh, I guess. She's gone viral for suggesting a note for brides and grooms to use when their guests haven't responded to invitations by the deadline. She says, send them a note saying, we're so sorry you can't make our wedding. Our RSV de- RSVP deadline has passed, and you, unfortunately, did not respond. We would have loved to have had you. Chris have shaken no. his head. No, 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 no. That, that, that's over the line. You don't do that. No, I'm sure what she's trying to do is to spur them to say, oh, we are coming yeah. to get an accurate head count. Yeah, because I, I, I don't hate it. Well, she says a lot of people... So just what Chris Dimson over the line. I think as harsh as this does sound, and yes, there could be nicer ways to phrase it. I mean, I didn't send this out on my wedding. This is just an idea that's been put out there. But yes, it could sound a bit harsh. But I also think if somebody got this, they would not forget to RSVP the next time. Mm, it's a lesson. Ne- she's talking about the next time. Yes, yeah, she is. She's, she's saying stick to it. She's saying if they don't RSVP, you tell them, sorry, you couldn't attend. You're done. You're cut off. I attended a wedding one time where I overheard Somebody say to the bride, the bride said, I didn't know you were coming. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, like she seemed surprised to see them at the reception. Mm -hmm. And the couple respond, well, you know, we wouldn't miss this. But they didn't RSVP. But they didn't RSVP. It's a bad, it's a really bad thing. thing And that's why I don't necessarily hate this. Right. But but nothing in in the modern world. I mean, the weddings have their own rules. Mm-hmm. You're supposed, and, and they they make it so easy. You literally get an envelope. All you have to do is check something, and they give you a stamp. Yep, they give oh, you yeah. the envelope. Yeah. But it's shocking to probably how many people don't do that. Mm-hmm. They don't. I know. Something. They just don't. You know. I mean, they ain't raised right. I mean, it's true. You know, the uh, we just did the Super Bowl party. It's as, it's even easier. You you send out. You say, here's the party. Here's the time. Can you do it? It's all online. You just check yes or no. That's all it is. Yeah, but you don't want to counter bad form and. Just with bad form. Yeah, saying I'm sorry to miss you. Yeah, that's 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 um, it's over the line. The, the, don't yeah, it's rudeness versus rudeness. It, it makes you look poor. It makes you look smaller. Yeah. This woman says it's a lesson teacher. I think as harsh as this does sound, oh. and yes, there could be nicer ways to phrase it. Sorry, that's the same thing that she just said. She said, yeah, it's a it's a. Yeah, she it, said it beautifully. It's a lesson teacher. She did. She did say it beautifully, and she says it's the right thing to it's do. It's created quite a debate. Some people have been saying that it's passive aggressive. Some people are saying it's just plain rude. Some people have said it's tacky, and I totally appreciate all of these opinions. She's terrific. I love it. She's terrific. She's, well, the first half of her sentence is correct. It's passive aggressive. It's passive not aggressive even passive. And tacky. It's, it's just aggressive. It's very tacky. Well, that's why I like it. I am passive aggressive. You yeah. are. I'm tacky. <laughs> I'm all of those things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really it's really just more aggressive than passive aggressive, isn't it? Yeah, so, it's aggressive. Sorry you couldn't. Uh, There's nothing passive yeah, about it. You're, you're coaching it in his left. Oh, I'm sorry you missed the wedding. It was yeah. swell. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of bitchy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it. You do, as you said, it's as easy as it can be, and it does. I mean, as the bride and groom or whoever's planning the wedding, you're supposed to have a head count, so you know how much food to get and all that stuff. It's always inexact. I mean, you, you never have the correct head count. Always, mm-hmm. but if everybody took that tact, you know, if half the people didn't RSVP and then showed up, you'd be in trouble. Yeah. Because usually, what we did was had what five extra meals or something just in case, and that's you know you get a few people showing up. For instance, my. Your, was it was your niece's date? It was my it was my cousin's, cousin's date. My my cousin uh brought her daughter. Oh, that's right, that's right, right. And so they did not RSVP at all. Okay. Now only my cousin was invited. Uh-huh. And she didn't RSVP at all. And then she showed up with her daughter, who was about eighteen, and that's her da- right. her daughter's boyfriend, who was also about eighteen. Yeah. With an attempted mustache. <laughs> with an attempted mustache <laughs> wearing uh Cargo shorts and flip flops, <laughs> and caught the garter. I threw the garter, and he caught the garter. Mm-hmm. And he was drinking your booze. Oh, probably. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. At yeah, eighteen, probably. Uh, guarantee. But as Biggie probably said, I'm sure that they would. I'm sure your cousin said to you, "Well, we wouldn't miss this." Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And uh, my wife had never met my cousin's daughter, and neither of us had met the boyfriend. And I think you know my wife's a bit of a stickler for these kinds of things. Yeah. First of all, it was you and a guest, and she brought two guests mm-hmm. and never RSVP'd. Andy caught the garter, and as Biggie has said the first time around when I told the story many years ago, 
that garter is likely was at one point stretched between two antlers on a moose head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Think about it. It's got your DNA, your That's wife's, right. and his. That's right. Yeah. I've changed that a little bit. That's through right. the years, now I like to think of it dangling from like a mid '90s Mustang. Yeah, river, 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 river. yeah, it's like Kid Rock plays. Yeah, <laughs> hey, you're never gonna believe where I got this. <laughs> <laughs> you ever listen to the radio? Yeah, you that blowhard. Yeah, uh, this is his wife's garter. That's Pine Straw's wife. Yeah, yeah. That's Pine Straw's wife. <laughs> Zach, you're talking about RSVP. This woman is causing controversy. She's saying, send out a note saying, oh, too bad you're going to miss it the day after the RSVP closes. Go ahead. First of all, I do like how aggressive it is, even though that's contrary to a lot of people's opinions. Mm -hmm. But, and I don't know how the mailing system is in the UK because she has an accent, mm -hmm. but we got married in November and we sent our invites out and found out weeks before the wedding that several people had not received theirs yet. Ooh. Several people. Ooh, that's terrible. We had forty to sixty people from out of town, and I'd say forty in all reported that they never got their invites. Man, that's terrible. That really is. I hate that. But were you able to make it right so they were able to come to the wedding and everything? Got it figured out. Thankfully, with technology, we were able to have a lot of phone calls, and mm -hmm. you know, we got people. We were able to kind of salvage who we could but several had had to make other plans when they saw some people get invites while they still had not gotten theirs my goodness and they were all awkward. mailed at the same time isn't that crazy it's yeah. a little awkward that is that's too bad man didn't i have enough postage maybe i wonder i wonder <laughs> <laughs> it's well, sufficient I feel, I, feel, I feel like well, i mean you got to put the return thing in yeah, there I, I, that's a heavier uh, you got to put two stamps postage on. due you got to put two love stamps <laughs> all right okay posted due you. <laughs> you know better than that thanks zach now that's tacky that, well, i agree that's you got to pay for your own uh, COD. stamp on the way back yeah cod <laughs> i bet nobody could I bet nobody under the age of 45 knows what that even means. COD. COD. You, know, you know COD. Cash on delivery. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if okay. B.B. Shea knows that. The, no. um, you know, um, eventually I bet wedding invitations just go to, like, my Super Bowl invitation. You just email it out. You know, and maybe it's doing I bet that. some may do, do that. Now. Maybe now yeah. they're doing Yeah, that. but I don't that's know. such a traditional thing. I know. Yeah. Brides, you know, a lot of brides love the tradition oh, of I agree. the printed invitation. But so many traditions that's are But they're falling by the way. So those traditions are just falling away. Maybe not at weddings, but certainly at, uh, at other things, you know. I mean, my wife used to be a stickler about sending invitations to just anything, but now you just do it online, you know. And That's the way people want it. I mean, at the end out. of the day, you want it. It's easier. Yeah. It's easier. I bet if when your daughter gets married, she'll send out paper. I think so. I, I, I think, well. I mean, she's 15 now. But I'll bet you at that time. My daughter's 15. Let's say she gets married in 30. So that's 15 years yep. now. I agree that she'll send out a paper invitation, but I bet you – 25 to 30 percent of weddings will be sent out on email at that mm -hmm. point i could see it anyway I, I don't know can, other thing you can see or your wife can see kelly is when you send out an invitation you can see if somebody's viewed it and not yeah. answered yeah that's always a little bit of a slap that's a little slap yeah <laughs> does that hurt i think that hurts <laughs> a little bit they'll look at it oh, for a while ago they look at it again yeah, yeah. did they know. respond yeah, especially no. four no. days later yeah, and they still haven't like, said anything yeah oh, they looked at it twice yeah. uh, <laughs> is that this weekend <laughs> Oh, God. Can we come up with an excuse? <laughs> yeah. They look at it like, uh, that's another one. Look at it for like four or five days, then finally it's like, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Why does the receiver put a little pressure on you? It does. Because I see it and don't open it. I, uh, right. I'm like, I know too. what's going to happen. There's that too. Because once you open it, it's like, oh, they saw they it. Know. They saw it. Mm -hmm. They know it. Do they still have the thing where you can see everybody who has responded, who else has responded? You can do that. Is that a setting that the sender? You, you it's all in the settings. It's, but I, we set it to be private, so yeah. you can't see that. I, the only one we do is the Super Bowl mm -hmm. party, and God, that was another thing. You know, there's like five football themed cards, and my wife was like, "What do you think of this one?" This is great. It's got a goal post of football. I said, "Perfect." Perfect. Then you know, five minutes. Later, what do you think of this one? It's great. It's fine. It's got the Super Bowl logo. Right? It's fine. Either you know, either one. Well, or there's this one. Or there's this one, and then it's you know a, a guy running a, a ball. I don't care. I don't care. You know, it doesn't matter to me. And I don't think that. But we went through a lot of that and wound up choosing whichever one. Mm -hmm. The other uh, wedding. I don't remember. Were, no, of course you don't. The no. Guys don't remember. No, that we stuff. don't remember that stuff. We mm -hmm. don't care about what it looks like. The uh, other wedding story, not as controversial, but there is also from the UK. Uh, a couple had their wedding on a farm, an outdoor wedding, 
and there was a uh, a cow nearby. In order to proceed, I must now ask if any person here present. <laughs> 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 Any person here present knows of any lawful impediment? Really? Twice? Twice. Not to be joined in matrimony. You should declare it now. Non bovine age. I tell you. Great ad lib. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was really good. But, you know, if if that had happened at our wedding, I think my wife would take it as a sign and probably say, we'll stop the proceeding. Would we have a runaway bride situation? I think we'd stop the proceeding right now. Would you just throw the flowers into the lake? That would be it. As if there'd be a cow at your wedding. Right, right, exactly. We didn't do that. I was waiting for the farmer to come out and be like, sorry, y'all. Boosh. <laughs> <laughs> Mad cow. Won't happen again. <laughs> sorry, oh my God. On with the proceedings. <laughs> Blood just splatters onto the bride and groom. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. All All right. Thank you for beer. That's it. You know, environmentalists. You won't be bothering you no more. I'll tell you this about cows. Dave, you'll love this. Environmentalists are suggesting we start eating more python meat instead of cow meat to save the planet because, of course, cows with their methane and all all of that. They're suggesting python meat is a very similar meat to cow's meat. (laughs) Eat reptiles. Like to prove that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, and we have. A lot of them, you know, we have have the Florida Everglades. Mm -hmm. And so many are saying we dig those things out of there, cook them up and eat them. Cook them up and eat them. We'll go Python. It is funny that like once pythons get around the Everglades, they're just like, I am horny. (laughs) (laughs) That's Florida about the Everglades. They sure did. It's an endless buffet. It's like it's the best spring break that never ends. Oh, God, they love it. They love it. Because uh, nothing eats them, and they can eat everything. Correct. And so many environmentalists saying we can solve two problems at once here. Let's start growing uh, pythons. Let's get them out of the Everglades. Start farming them where we can keep them, and then sell them as steaks because it tastes a lot like steak that you'd get and eliminate the cow population. Go python. But you'd have to have it. I mean, you couldn't get a steak. I mean, it would have to be ground yeah. python, right? Can you? I, I don't. Well, even, are you going to get a ribeye off of it? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, they're, they're they're thick. They're thick. I think you do chunks. Can you do like a chunk of like yeah. you just Beef slice tips, a python? Like, like I mean, like, if you like, slice it, yeah, right yeah, like, through. Is like, it like python tips? Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. Isn't that what they used to do at that pizza place? Didn't they put rattlesnake on you? They did, yeah. yeah. Rattlesnake. How yeah. was that? It was just like little it was tiny. cubes of. But wasn't it more like like a little chicken? Like a, if you had a piece of chicken on there, would no, it be like a, little chi- chicken. like a little chicken nugget? I mean, t- no, I didn't think Small, it was that small. I thought it was even smaller, like a fingernail size, ground up. <laughs> but but rattlesnakes are not nearly as big as pythons. You could, you could well, I mean, you can make you just got bigger chunks. Yeah, you make a uh, you can make make strips. There's a bone in the middle. You got to get rid of. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. got to flay it. And you got all the the guts Ugh. and stuff in there. You know, I know. Well, they go ahead and have it. I well, don't I'll, think I would want that. But several environmentalists are looking for earth-friendly alternatives to cow's meat. Yeah, I'd be vegetarian first. Which we have, of course, become so reliant yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess you're sort of an environmentalist. But if you're out there killing snakes, mm-hmm. I mean, I know they're predators for the most part. But you can't really be a full environmentalist if you're advocating killing animals. Well, maybe not. But you are, you know, you're saving so much land. Yes. That, yeah. that's and, the, and cows yeah, do take up mm-hmm. resources. The, the, the resources, the methane, all that stuff. Well, uh, you know, you say that, but I wonder if you had like a if you had it really prepared well, would it be good? No, you don't think it'd be good. <laughs> no. What if it was in a stew? No, no. Yeah, you I mean, you could spice up almost anything. But you don't think yeah. it'd be tasty on a plate? No, I tell you, just wh- the idea of it. I picture it being very earthy. You think it's a mental thing? It's like eating frogs' legs. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I, I, frog legs are good. I mean, they I've had those. They're they're really good. They can be considered a delicacy. Uh, python or frogs, frog, frog, frog legs, yeah. yeah, or escargot. I mean, things like that mm-hmm. have their place. It's just, but snake is a reptile. It's a, it's a ground dweller. It's, mm-hmm. You're not supposed to eat that. Same with frogs, though. Frogs no, are re- frogs are different. Amphibians, right? Yeah. Oh, it's an amphibian. So you, so reptiles. No, do we? We don't eat any reptiles. No. Uh, well, I don't I eat mean, turtle soup. Or they're yeah. amphibians too, right? They're amphibians too. Is a frog? Yeah, a frog is an amphibian. I thought a turtle. I'm not sure what that is, but uh, what about would you, would you be into the cricket? You know, you hear that sometimes. Protein, vegetarian. No, I'll, I'll eat the grass. They you'd eat. rather you'd rather eat vegetarian than eat stuff like that. Yeah, or kill myself. Yeah, I understand it. Keep You've never been one. I've tried to get you on the lab grown meat. I've tried to get you on all of these things. Not interested. It never works for you. It, you never go for it exactly. Mm-hmm. Here's one for you. This is a health report, I guess. 
What's the healthiest condiment to keep in your refrigerator? I just saw a list. And it's, Durex. No, <laughs> no, no, Biggie. Condiment. Condiment. Trojan condiment. condiment. <laughs> you keep them cold, Biggs? <laughs> I, think that would, I think that would kill the mood. Wouldn't you, you think you put them on? I, like, I think it's a nice surprise. Yeah. <laughs> For her pleasure. <laughs> it's like menthol. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. No. Most pr- healthy condiment. Now, yeah. what do you consider? Well, as a condiment. I have a list here. Uh, I mean, all the I, 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 all the of these. Yeah, these are the biggies. Ketchup, are mustard, included. relish. All they're all there now. Ketchup is full of sugar, so that's not probably all mustard. There. Mustard's number two. It's like guacamole. If you consider that a condiment, I don't. But that's I get it. Mm. Guacamole's number one. What mustard salsa? number two. Salsa's number four. Which that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Sal- yeah. Salsa's nothing but really tomatoes and mm-hmm. tomatoes and uh, a little pepper and onion. Yeah, yeah. and uh, maybe some, some vinegar, vinegar in there. Vinegar in there. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, hot sauce was on there too. Yeah, mm. that's all vinegar. This says uh, the the expert that wrote this said hot sauce is spices and vinegar and a little tomato paste and it's great for you. Yeah, uh, they they love it. But they they said if you're gonna keep these, if you're gonna keep condiments to flavor up your food in your fridge, and Biggie will be here to hear this. He's going through a journey right now. Mm. <laughs> do you like guacamole? I do like guacamole. I used to not, but now I do. But you can't keep that for very long, can you? No. It turns nah, out. Yeah, that's a like day. You can keep a bottle of ketchup in your fridge for well, a year. A year. Yeah. That's right. Uh, believe me, we have. I, I don't know where this is on the list, but I love a brown mustard, a spicy mustard. It's number two, all mustards. And, and, and they said the brown and the spicy. Stone I love brown? it on a sandwich. Yeah, stone stone ground. the best. Balsamic vinegar. Love it on a sandwich. I don't even consider that a condiment. I don't either. That's Oil and vinegar, that's you, condiment. You put it on your sandwich. Yeah, you put it on the lettuce, yeah. I like that. Well, that's is that part of that Jersey Mike's thing? Well, mm-hmm. And Subway. Okay. Yeah. Subway will offer it. That's mm-hmm. where I first got it with Subway was they said, do you want any oil and vinegar? And, of course, I was a youth. I was like, oh, I don't know, but sure, that sounds good. It's good. And it, it's changed me. And that Jersey Mike's, when they do it like Mike's way, that, wet. Mm-hmm. that's good. Oh, yeah. I like it as wet as it can be, too. I don't man. like it wet. Oh, God, I do. I, I They can wet that bread. You got to do it. You got to eat it quick. Yeah, I agree. Because then it gets sloppy. <laughs> I mean, it will. Where's it going? It, it will. Oh, sloppy. We have two experts right yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell they you, they don't do it now, but they sure did. Yeah, yeah, oh man. It, it, oh Ooh. no. Well, vinegar's still okay. Sure, but I have a problem with the bread. Yeah. Now it goes best to me with mayonnaise. Really oh the mayonnaise. yeah. Mayonnaise yeah. is a way off this list. Yeah. Uh, don't do any mayonnaise. Here are a few others. However, if you think if you make your mayonnaise at home, I mean, it is oil. Yeah. A lot and of eggs. It. Yes. But the oil is so heavy, so saturated. Well, it doesn't have to be, does it? I mean, can you, you make use it like with a olive oil? Canola or can you do an olive? You could use any kind of oil, I think, to really? mix with eggs. You just got to mul- emulsify it and long enough. It high fat content, but yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. But it's natural. It is. I mean, if you do it's it that eggs way, and oil. if you do it that way, yeah, yeah, you're right. And they sometimes they they sell mayonnaise that's like a uh, natural. They'll they'll say it's a healthier mayonnaise. Yeah, they'll sell a keto mayonnaise, but it's expensive. Mm-hmm. Does it look? Does it? I've never seen that. Does it, does it look like that awful peanut butter that you have to stir? <laughs> No, it's got a better, yeah. uh, and that is bad. I tried to eat that peanut butter for so long, and it's just like all you know natural. What? Yeah, it's just not any good. I hate. That. I'd rather just go without peanut butter than eat that stuff. Is that? But that's not. The, that's the peanut butter that's prepackaged. That's not like the peanut butter in the vat that you can grind yourself in the store. I think that turns Some that way. That. I think that I think turns, it turns that way, that way because the the oil in the peanuts separates. It, yeah, you just yeah. have to stir it up. Yeah. But it I don't be like. Okay. It. There's not a lot. There's not as much flavor as a GIF. Well, that's the one where our friend Ronnie, who was so healthy when I tried to eat her peanut butter that time, said, this is going to taste very different to you than it does to me. Mm-hmm. That's like garbage, isn't it? Yeah. It does. Oh, well, uh, uh-huh. And it did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, she made cookies with them. It's awful. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's a company that's called... <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> call she, that? She did, yes. There's a company called, like, Primal Kitchen, and they're the ones they... It's expensive, but everything there is, like... The mayonnaise is made with avocado oil. Mm-hmm. Everything's supposed to be yes, less. Yes, seen that too. Yeah, they're you know they make a barbecue sauce that doesn't have any added sugar. Here's your other condiments: uh, tzatziki sauce. Love like a tzatziki. it. It's good. It's very good. Hummus. Love it. Mm-hmm. Chris Tim does not. Mm-hmm. You know what Chris Tim told Dave once when Dave offered him hummus? Why don't you just take a crap in my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> and I did. He did. I don't think this show has been the same since. No. In fact, it's ruined hummus for me. <laughs> In fact, I, I, I say I all of it. Egypt. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it, but now when the I whole eat. whole Fertile Crescent. Yeah, you yes, are, all the way that. up into that whole northeast all portion of Africa. Yes. Pesto. Pesto is a sign. I like a pesto. Yeah. I like a pesto. I used to. I like a pesto. I like a pesto as well. Those are the but ones. Just lightly. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you on that.